Hello, I'm David Larson, amateur radio operator KK4WW, historical microcomputer collector for over 40 years. We're doing this video here in our little microcomputer museum in Floyd, Virginia. Today we want to talk about this MITS Altair 8800. This is serial number 21. It was ordered by uh, Dean Gross before they were even in production, before they were even announced in the popular electronics. His order, and I want to show you his order ticket here, was dated December 17, 1974. Dean learned an awful lot of programming, wired special cards, expanded this computer. So I would say this is probably the first computer of its type, the 8800, that got as much use as this one did. Now we're going to show you the interior of the computer and look at some of the cards and some of the things he sent. Uh, it's a fascinating uh, example of early microcomputing. Well, let's take a look at the inside of this 8800 computer number 21, serial number 21. This was purchased by Dean Gross, as we said. Um, first of all, here's the CPU card. It has an 8080 CPU card. And that serial number on that card, by the way, is uh, 21, the same as the serial number of the computer. If you look inside the computer itself, the green card to the left of those yellow wires there the little bus card, there's two connectors on it for the MITS cards. That's what came with the original computer. This big blue expansion interface off to the right was added by Dean Gross, and he wired a number of special cards there. Here's a uh, one kilobyte RAM card. And so I said he wired these cards. Look at all the wiring he did here. A lot of wire wrap wiring, terrific amount of work. What he has on here, and he also wrote the software for this. He's got a EEPROM card to hold the uh, program, a floppy disk controller, and a serial uh, card. And over to the right hand side here is an, is a, a, an expanded read write memory card or RAM card as you call it, so it would have more memory than just the single little one kilobyte card you see here. And swinging on around here, the back side you see the transformer, the filter capacitors and so forth. It has an analog power supply which added quite a bit of weight to the system itself. So this is more or less the uh, inside of the card, inside of the uh, computer I should say. And uh, actually very nice condition. And maybe we can get a shot of the serial number here on the back. 220021 alpha, that means that serial number 21 in the A stands for assembled. There's some of my nomenclature I put there. I received this computer from Dean Gross in January of 1995. One of the things that really makes this uh, fun about collecting microcomputers is the uh, process you go through to find the computers. By the way, we have uh, links to longer videos on some of the cards and these documents I'll be showing you, so you don't have to spend a lot of time here. If you want to see them, there'll be some links at the end of the video. You can go see them. But my first contact with uh, Dean Gross was September of 1990. And I wrote to him, actually, he wrote to me saying that he had saw my advertisements for microcomputers, and he had this number, serial number 21, and he'd like to uh, do something with it. Well, that was in 1990. My goodness. I contacted him together again in 1994, and he wrote me this response. This was like five years later, almost. He wrote me this response. I'm greatly su surprised to receive your letter and so on, and he'd be happy to uh, work with me on obtaining the computer. So we were delighted to get the computer, and the chase is often a, a good bit of the fun. Now I want to tell you some of the things that he did send me. First of all, very important, and uh, you can see a video on this if you want towards the end of the, but he sent me the actual MITS um, purchase order or sales receipt dated December 17th, 1974. This was before the announcement in Popular Electronics. 
and it says uh, that this was $498. And by the way, if they pre-ordered the assembled unit, at that time they got it for the same price as a kit. So we paid $495 for this computer and $8 shipping. The total price was $506 for this computer, basic without any of the expansion interfaces. A little more history about these computers. Uh, this computer was announced really big time in the Popular Electronics January issue in response to John Titus's Mark 8 computer in Radio Electronics uh, July 1974. When they started to produce this computer, a couple of things happened. Bill Gates and Paul Allen had been wanting to write software and hadn't found anyone that would make a computer that they could write software for. So when they saw this computer announced in Popular Electronics, they called uh, Ed Roberts, who was a designer and it was his company, Ed Roberts. Um, invited them to come where this computer was being manufactured and spent five weeks writing Tiny Basic. And that was basically the start of the Microsoft company by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Paul Allen actually stayed on with uh, Ed Roberts for a little while and, and uh, was, I think, director of marketing, but I don't think he stayed there very long because he and uh, Bill Gates got rolling with the, uh, uh, his company Microsoft quite, quite quickly. This also spawned some real interest with uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak at a meeting, um, one of the computer meetings in the club out in California in early uh, 1976. They saw this computer being demonstrated at one of the computer clubs and uh, their reaction was it wasn't a very good computer as far as computers were concerned. And, Steve Wozniak said that uh, he, his uh, computer that he was working on, which turned out to be the Apple I, was going to be a much better computer. Wouldn't have all these switches on the front and so forth, and it would be a much better computer, which it was, in fact. And then they went on immediately to design the Apple II, which was a phenomenal computer as well. Ed Roberts designed this computer. And uh, this is a very historical computer because it's considered to be the first computer that you could buy as a complete kit or assembled, and it would actually run. Didn't do very much, uh, actually, uh, without a lot of additional support and uh, interface cards, but it did run, and you could do something with it. So he's given credit for that. His company grew, and he made other models, many other models, and other variety of computers, and uh, they became quite popular for a while. When he first made this computer, he thought it would sell 500. And I believe he had orders for 5,000 uh, within a short period of time. I don't remember how many computers he actually sold, but it was a lot of them. In fact, uh, after a while, he uh, got tired running the company and it was getting difficult, more competition a little bit later on. And he sold the company for reportedly a million dollars and uh, went into his passion. He went to med school and became a medical doctor. So this computer allowed him to, to do that. Unfortunately, Ed Roberts passed away last year in 2010, but he was a very important person in the microcomputer revolution. And uh, sometimes he wasn't given enough credit for what he did. And sometimes he uh, received uh, some very nice awards as well.